In this video, I'm gonna tell you five ways that you can avoid making the mistakes that I made when I first became a real estate agent. You're sitting at the kitchen table with your mom, overcome with excitement. You have a deal in escrow and you are thrilled. In fact, you're already thinking about how you're gonna spend that paycheck. The dopamine is flowing and you're on top of the world. And then your phone rings and it's bad news and you realize that deal is falling apart. You just went from the top of the mountain and you fell all the way to the bottom of the valley and crashed with a loud thud. You feel destroyed inside. It doesn't have to happen. All right, the first mistake that I made when I first got my real estate license back in the day. I knew I needed to get in touch with people that I hadn't spoken with in a while, but I made the big mistake of letting the first conversation we had be about real estate. Imagine how that feels. You haven't talked to David for five years. You get a phone call or a text and you think, what could this be about? You wonder if somebody just died and you haven't heard it. Fear is coursing through your system. Why would he be calling me? This is so weird. You answer the phone and you have a conversation with me, but it goes right to real estate. How I'm an agent. I just got my license and I want to know if you want to buy or sell a house or anyone else that you know might want to. You went from a fear state to a disappointed state. Much like the multi-level marketing schemes that we all can't stand, realtors can easily come across this way without realizing it. If you haven't talked to somebody in years, don't let your first conversation be about what they can do for you. Start the conversation naturally. Apologize you haven't kept up. Have a genuine curiosity about what's going on with them in their life. Let them run the conversation. Let them talk about as many things as they can their family, their kids, their job, their fitness, what they're watching on TV, who they think the next person to die in Game of Thrones is gonna be. What's important is that you make it about them. Then follow up. Mention things that you had in the first conversation. Mention things you remember from the first conversation that they said. Work on building that relationship. At a certain point, they will ask you, so what's new with you? At that point, you mention you have your real estate license and tell them how you excited you are to help people. Don't make the same mistake I did and let the first call to someone you have not spoken with in a long time be about you, your business, and how they can help your needs. The second mistake I made working with buyers was I didn't get buyer representation agreements signed. Now, many of you say you don't believe in that. That's okay. Hear me out. I had more times than I want to admit buyers I had done a lot of work with have one small mistake or one misunderstanding in the relationship lead to them using another buyer's agent who stepped in, capitalized on all the work that I had just done, and basically just had to write the offer for them. And then they got all the commission. Even though I had done 98% of the heavy lifting that other person got paid and guess how much I got did I get 98% of the paycheck no I got zero that's how it works in real estate sales you get all of the deal or you get none of the deal I also can say more than my fair share I picked up buyers from other agents who did not have them sign buyer rep agreements that person was unhappy with their agent I grabbed them showed them houses for one or two days wrote the offer and I got them in contract. It goes both ways. Here's why you need to get buyer representation agreements signed. This is a difficult business and there is no fiduciary duty that your clients have to you. You will have a fiduciary duty to them. You are inspected and held accountable by a licensing board. They are not. At any time, they can switch and go with another agent. And it's naive to think that there's not ever going to be a point where feathers get ruffled. Now, also, many times in our relationships, this will happen, but then after they close on the house, all's forgiven. So if you know at the end of the day, everything's gonna be fine, and you know how much work you did, you need to get that buyer rep agreement signed so that they're committed to working with you and you can get through those rough spots together. One thing I did that really helped with getting them signed is I started giving buyer presentations and not just listing presentations. Every agent knows they're supposed to give a listing presentation. And I had an official one made that we would present on an iPad or a computer, a full presentation that spelled out what we do to sell a home. Well, I started doing that to buyers too. And that was a game changer for me. When buyers had me walk them through everything that they could expect in the home buying process, they gladly signed a buyer representation agreement when we were finished. If you're not doing this, you're probably cutting corners. If you're sending them off to get pre-approved and not giving them a presentation, if you're going out to show them homes, before you've sat down with them and explained what the home buying process is, not only are you making it harder on yourself, you're also making it harder on the client who doesn't know what to expect. And everything is scarier when it's a surprise. So do yourself a favor, take yourself some time, invest in the client, give them an hour and a half of your time to give them a presentation of what they will expect. They will sign a buyer agreement and you will have a marriage. The third mistake I make, I didn't get the most out of my listings. We all know how big a listing is. We love it. I still get a rush when we take a new listing. 
And I did a great job of getting them sold. I have over a 99% success rate at selling listings. In my whole career, only two haven't sold. One was the first one. No, the second one that I ever took and I knew it was a mistake. The other one was a client who had to list their house for way too high. And we knew going into it that we were pricing it high, but they didn't have the equity to sell for less. What I could have done much better was make sure I got listings out of the listings I had. So when my sign was in the yard, I should have been knocking on the doors of all the neighbors to introduce myself. I should have been marketing on social media way better than I was. I should have been holding constant open houses and not only picking up buyer clients, but picking up seller clients of neighbors that came to see what their competition looked like who are thinking about selling their house also. Every listing, if marketed well, can get you another listing and two to three buyer clients. I did good getting buyers out of listings. I could have done much better getting listings out of listings. Number four, I didn't keep up with my database. When you get busy and you hit top producer status, you do this stuff in the book skill, you'll find that it becomes very hard to keep in touch with past clients because you're always looking at the next paycheck, the next escrow, the next closing, the next deal, the next client, and you forget about the people you've already done. And if you lose touch with them for too long, they forget about you too. And then they start going to your competition. And there's nothing worse than seeing your ex with one of your old friends. Well, that's how it feels when you lose a buyer client or a seller client to another agent that you just can't stand. Do yourself a favor. And when you get busy, start using the principles that we talked about in the book Scale, where you can build a business so you are not the person super busy putting out all the fires and you can focus on culturing, maintaining, and taking care of that database so it supplies you with referrals for the rest of your career. And the number five mistake I made as a newer agent was I didn't have the right lending partner. I frequently found myself working with a lender who would drop the ball and blow up my deal or who would tell the client something different than what I had told them and cause them to get cold feet. Or maybe I would have to call the client and try to explain in layman's terms what the lender was using, fancy lending specific vernacular that the client didn't understand. Many times the deal fell apart and it was not my fault, but ultimately it was my fault because I picked the wrong lending partner. Make sure the person that you are referring business to is fighting just as hard as you to save the deal. Make sure they're explaining things to the clients in a way that makes the deal easier to come together, not harder to come together. You don't want to just find any person that hands you their business card and assume all lenders are the same because they're not. That's why I started the one brokerage and trained the loan officers to support realtors, the thing that I needed the most, not work against them without knowing it. All right, those are the five mistakes that I made in my career that I put into the books I wrote for Bigger Pockets so that you as an agent could avoid making them yourself and hopefully make more money than I did when I first got started. If you want to learn more about these five ideas and a whole lot more than that, head over to biggerpockets.com slash scale and check out my newest book. If you use my name, David, you get 10% off. So remember to put that into the promo code space. Also, if you buy the package with all three of my books, you get sold, skill, and scale, and you will get a month off of my Wealth Building Mastermind. It costs much more than the cost of those three books combined, a lot more than that, for free when you buy it. So don't waste any time, go pick them up now.